it feels like in some ways it lacks creativity. It feels like they lack originality. It feels like feels like they need to reinvent themselves, in my opinion, and they don't know how. They have no idea how. They're like, well, this works, we'll keep doing it. And instead of like looking internally like the way artists do, they're looking externally. As someone from so looking outside to the parkour community and I, I was going to the uh, parkour.com website and I came across this article that titled best and worst YouTube channels uh, right now, YouTube <laughs> parkour channels right now. Yeah. And surprisingly, I saw store. Am I <laughs> not sure if I'm saying the name right? I saw store uh, in the worst section. And yeah. like as a person looking from outside, like store is like the biggest uh, parkour team that I have personally have ever seen and i always uh, you know come across came ac come across their content on social media or youtube and it was a real surprise when i saw that so i i read it and some of it made sense some of it didn't because no i don't have any park background in parkour so can you uh, tell us a little bit about that yeah well for anyone i mean everyone knows store i think i think they're the biggest success story in the parkour in parkour history i mean besides of course parkour and david bell i think and you know, there's maybe some other things like Take Flight, I think is an amazing success story. But at a global level, there's no doubt that Store cracked the code. Um, I was a big critic of Store in the beginning. Uh, they've proved me wrong. What they do is awesome. The athletes are amazing. Their production's phenomenal. They're trying to take things to the next level. So they're great. I think they're close to 8, 8 million subscribers now. For a time, they had more subscribers than ESPN, which was phenomenal. It, it, they're awesome, right? Everyone knows Store. Um, but there was an article on Parkour.com, as you said, the best and worst YouTube channels of 2022. And it was written by a contributor named Raven, uh, sorry, Raven, uh, Raven McCarthy, I believe is his last name. And cool dude who's been in the Parkour community a long time. And he penned that article. So I had nothing to do with that article. Like I'm kind of the editor in chief of Parkour.com. So I review articles, make sure they make sense and they're grammatically correct. And then I kind of let our contributors publish. So he published that article and I was surprised to see Store as well as one of the worst parkour channels of 2022. But why were they labeled the worst? And I actually agree with Raven's analysis. You know, I'd have to go back and read it, but I think it's something to the sense of Store is in a situation where they're kind of chasing the money now. Like in some ways, their brand has kind of gone stale on the YouTube front from a parkour perspective. So when you think of store, you think of roof running, you think of roof culture, you think of store super tramps, you think of these epic video adventures they made. And yet at the end of the day, what seems to be their bread and butter cash flow is their YouTube channel. You know, if you monetize the YouTube channel correctly, then you figure about a million views, you get about three grand. It depends. Right, but three to five grand is kind of a good safe estimate for a million YouTube views. And they've amassed more than a billion views. So if you do the math, you figure if they had been able to monetize correctly, there's three million dollars over the last ten years that or twelve years that they've been able to monetize. Now they haven't probably been able to monetize it fully uh, for various reasons, like one point the channel was blocked and things like that. But the point is is this as far as I can tell, seems to be the way they make money. Of course they have other things like productions they worked on. Uh, the film, what was it called? There was a Michael Bay film they worked on. There's commercials um, that they've done and things like that they make money from. But the YouTube channel seems to be where they make the money. And so they're caught in this weird trap where they have to get views. And it mm. seems from a, a parkour perspective that they're chasing views. They're not necessarily chasing parkour anymore. And so right. they... You know, I mean, and some of that, take what I said with a grain of salt, some of that, because some of that's my my perspective. I don't know how they make their money, but it's kind of getting redundant. It's kind of boring. Like, you know, they stumble across these fads and they run with it. Like the water challenge fad was a big fad for a while where they do jumps over water. So they're like, oh, wait, that right. was really successful. So now like, oh, we got to make another one, right? It's not because they're interested in it. It's because they're they're trying to say, how do we get 2 million views you know, or, or how do we get 50 million views so we can make $100,000 off our video? Which, by the way, uh, I give them total credit for. From a business standpoint, I don't think there's anything wrong with what they're doing. I think it's actually to be to be applauded in every way. But if you're looking to make a parkour channel, it's it's like they're not a parkour channel anymore. They're guys. They're like guys with a YouTube channel that are that are monetizing to the rest of the world. 
and the parkour community is interested in parkour content. YouTube community is not interested in parkour content. They're interested in content that's infused with parkour that tells a story that someone wants to watch. So, you know, a recent video or a kind of a theme of a couple of videos are climbing out of difficult things. So they found this water drain in a recent video. And they had to figure out how to climb out of this water drain. How do they get all six people to climb out of this water drain? And it's a fun video to watch. It's edited super well. There's some great personalities on the team. The mixture of the guys, the the chemistry they have is great. So it's an enjoyable video. It has nothing to do with parkour. Like they're in this water drain trying to climb out of it. And the first one out of it is Toby Seeger, who's a, a climber. He's, he's learned to climb in Boulder at a really high level. So he gets out and then he gets everybody out. It's like, a, it's a great film, but it, it's not a parkour. It, it, nothing to do with parkour. It's like, like store has now transitioned to almost like a personality, uh, which more power to them. I think that's the transition you make when you're, when you, when you make it big, but it's just not a parkour. It's, I just think that it's, there's something missing there from a parkour perspective that feels kind of shallow. It feels kind of redundant. It feels uninteresting at a macro level. Now, they just launched a video called Caveman 5, which was 100% parkour, 13 minutes. It's awesome. It's like, it is it is the parkour video of the year. It, it might be the parkour video of the year when we get to the end of 2023. It's awesome. But at a macro level, it's just, it feels like in some ways it lacks creativity. It feels like they lack originality. It feels like, it feels like they need to reinvent themselves, in my opinion, and they don't know how. They have no idea how. They're like, well, this works. We'll keep doing it. And instead of like looking internally, like the way artists do, they're looking externally. Like, well, what video will get us hundred million views? Let's do that. Versus like, what music do we want to make? Like I'm a musician, I'm an artist. I'm putting out a new album. I'm going to do what I want to do. And I hope my audience and my fan base follows me. Now that's the artist vibe. And I think some of the artistry in, in store is gone. And it's, it's like I said, it's, it's cool and more credit to them, but that's the critique. I think that Raven was more getting on and, and I'm expanding and, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but it's something complex like that mm -hmm. that isn't that isn't as interesting from a from a parkour viewpoint with a parkour filter. Does that make sense at all? Absolutely. Yeah, it does. Definitely.